What is up? Welcome back to another video. We're recording here in my kitchen because I don't want to turn the air conditioning off. So it's in the other room and I'm hoping it's quiet enough in here. And if not, then uh, this video won't make it to the timeline. I wanted to take a minute today to talk about a relatively recent experience I had. And the main reason that I'm making this video now, cause it's actually not a recent experience, it was a few months ago, but I'm making this video because my good friend John, we're gonna check out his channel, John John Mock Film, was kind enough to scan these developed negatives that I had. So I now have some kind of reference for what I'm gonna talk about which is the Leica M7. I'm not a Leica person. It's just, it's out of my tax bracket. It's out of my purview. I like SLRs more than range finders personally, but I've always kind of understood the appeal. Although I'm very, cheap sounds bad, thrifty. Thrifty sounds, you know what? Thrifty sounds like hip and stylish and cool. And that's, I mean, not, I'm not those things, but like I'm, I'm cheap but cheap sounds like, you know, Matilda's dad. We really should weld these bumpers on, but that takes time, equipment, money. So we use super, super glue instead. Cheap just sounds bad. So not that, I'm thrifty, but in an unstylish way. Yeah. Leicas to me have not had a whole lot of appeal because it's just, you know, I can, I'm good, I'm good. Thank you, but I'm okay. Shot with a couple in the past. My buddy had an M6. I got a few frames through that, and I was like, "Oh, this is nice." Like, I get it. I definitely get it. It's really well, well built, well designed. You feel the quality and all of these things. I basically ended up shooting a Leica M7, which is where these photos came from. Now, bear in mind, this was a test roll that I shot just exclusively to make sure whatever patch was put over the curtain because there was a giant hole burnt into it because the sun through the lens turns into like one of those like ancient Greek solar death rays. Because of that, we had to patch up the curtain. I got the opportunity to shoot it. I used a test roll of Ilford XP2 and got it developed just to make sure that there's no giant glaring cyclops eye hole in the middle of every frame and then didn't get them scanned. Then John scanned them and now we have them, blah, blah, blah. Now we're all caught up to speed, okay? So I'm not gonna talk about the pictures because they're not good. Like they're just bad. I was just trying to get through the roll. It's expired XP2, so not really that that good anyway. And it was just walking around the, the shop. Now, the concern that I had was this is by and far one of the most expensive cameras that I've held. I live by a little motto, a little like code, if you will, the Bronco code, if you will, which is don't make mistakes that you can't fix financially, buy yourself out of, basically. And anything with that Leica, if I look at it the wrong way, I cannot afford. I can, I just can't, even on a good day. But, ugh. Um, so, I was very delicate, very scared the entire time, very trepidatious. And I think that kind of is going to blend into a little bit of my critique here. Because, like, ultimately, if you shot with a Leica, you, you know what a Leica is. Like, you know it's a high quality thing. I realize I'm talking about like a high quality camera as I'm shooting in a kitchen. So it's not like this is a fucking stupid video. If you've shot with Leicas before, then I'm preaching to the choir. Like you are already sold on the whole system. You like them, you love them, whatever. The first couple of things that I want to address is the misconceptions okay because there's a few one that the canonet ql17 g3 is the poor man's leica i've never really liked that to be honest like it just it's not they're they're both range finders like that's the only real similarity between the two like they're both happen to be range finders the canonet ql17 g3 has a leaf shutter it has a fixed lens. It has a top shutter speed of 1 500. It has a different metering system. 
It has a much smaller build. Uh, it has a little bit of a less complex build structure as the Leica. So the whole like, ah, the fucking Canonet is a poor man's Leica. I think that misnomer was given because like Canonets are pretty good cameras. And I agree to that completely. I think they are really solid cameras, but I don't think that they are even remotely comparable. They're just not. I think especially in price, uh, Canonets are not going for a whole lot, honestly. They used to go for a lot more. I'm kind of shocked at how much the price has gone down. But, you know, in like the 200 range, thereabouts. Probably less, to be honest. But like 200 bucks, 250, we'll say. 250, there you go. A Leica, depending on which one you get, is probably gonna be about 10 times that, It'd be about 25. And that was, I think, the last time I checked. It's probably gone up more. I'll put the prices up here. I'm just not gonna do research right now because it's too hot for that. I don't wanna overwork my brain. I just, I wanna address that because it is always kind of bothered me because I'm like, oh, it's, it, from a repair person's perspective, they couldn't be more different. So I would say like the Canon 7 or the Canon P, that would be like a poor man's Leica or something like that. But I don't know, Canon being the poor man's Leica just kind of always rubs me the wrong way. So I wanted to address that here. And it was funny because at the time I was actually shooting the two. I had a Canon that I was testing out and I was testing out the M7. And obviously there's notable differences. One being the Leica, has just a significantly brighter viewfinder. Like it is, um, it, it's enlightening almost. Like you look through, you're like, oh, I get it. Like it, it's it's one of those, one of those moments for me where I was just like, wow, like a little bit of a light bulb flash in my head. And I felt the exact same way the first time I shot with an F3, where I was just like, ooh, 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 this is good, this is nice. And I'm not always able to like put my finger on exactly that what components kind of arise that out of me, but like the Leica viewfinders by and large, the M6 and the M7 specifically are like very, very nice. They're very nice to look at. Want to get a Leica, the price makes sense. Like you can make sense of it. That M7 I think is probably one of the nicer cameras that I've shot with. That being said, I really didn't like it that much. Like it's, it's nice, like don't get me wrong, it is nice, but from my limited time with it, limited exposure in a very, very controlled environment, I found it to be very nerve wracking. Cause again, this is a very expensive thing and I'm like kind of concerned about that. I'm not trying to like be a hater or go against the grain here. You know, like, ah, you guys all like this thing that's really cool. Well, I'm built different. I don't like it that much. My criticism f just fully lies within my ingrained mindset of why am I spending so much money on this thing? I understand that it is a very well-built, well-designed, the money is there kind of thing, but to the same extent, I really like my Nikon F3 and I just, I, I prefer more SLR systems. Just ultimately, I, to me, like SLRs are just the way to go. It just, it makes sense in my mind, I enjoy finding focus with them a little bit more. I think the form factor of uh, range finders is nice for some people, but it doesn't really do much for me. And I've spoken to many, many photographers I know about like the joys of shooting with Leica, the complexity of the lenses and all the different coatings and the different names. And when this one was produced, it has this specific thing or whatever, and has like these magical gnome whimsical elements and stuff. And I'm not trying to like downplay any of that. From my perspective, I just, I don't value those things as much as I do, I value having a camera with me. I think my, my point in saying this all and like having this discussion just to begin with is, I think there is a certain misconception and I've brought this up in videos in the past, I'll continue to bring this up in videos in the future. There's this general misconception that if you have the top of the line, then you will be the best photographer. And while I think that the tools you have, if they are tools you enjoy using, can definitely elicit more favorable results, I don't think spending, you know, three grand on a camera body 
is the ultimate path to happiness. I just don't. Um, and the more I've kind of accumulated shite, um, the more I've realized that where it's like these things don't always make me feel fulfilled or happy. And there are certain cameras that I really do enjoy using and they have this intangible quality about their usage that I, I'm not always great at putting my finger on, but like, you know, when you feel it, it's just like, wow, this is, it's a sublime experience. It feels like a match. And then there's other times where I'm shooting with something like this, like M7, where I'm like, I, I know this is a nice thing and I can understand that and appreciate it. And I can see why uh, people might like it, but it just, it's not cutting the mustard for me. And I think that's okay. Like, I think that's completely fine. I think I really enjoy shooting with my Nikon F3. And I think that someone else could pick it up and be like, I don't like this. And I think that's fine. Like, we're allowed to have different opinions, basically is what I'm trying to say. The things that are going to work for me might not always work for others and vice versa. So the Leica M7 experience overall broadened my perspective in a way that I can appreciate. And um, like I said, the pictures that came out of it were uh, not really even worth talking about. But ultimately, I, I just hope that this can serve as some sort of insight. You are saving up for that big purchase because you have your heart set on it and that's what you want. Don't let me talk you out of it. Go for it. Achieve your dreams and find joy and happiness in that, please. But if you're like wanting to get into film and you think that you have to spend top dollar to get into it, you don't like you can there's plenty of good options out there there's all sorts of affordable range finders there's the canon nets and stuff like that and there's all sorts of different options that you can you know just kind of dip your toes into so to speak and not have to like mortgage your house or skip a few months of or years of rent depending on where you live so ultimately um the Leica M7, great camera. Not for me, but that doesn't mean it couldn't be for you. Anyway, that is it for today's video. Uh, thank you for joining me in the kitchen. I'm gonna go back to the air conditioning because that feels nice. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. I hope you enjoyed this very weird and long rant that is ultimately completely meaningless. I appreciate it, and I will uh, catch you on the next one.